Hey, Cube, enjoy this. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, excellent. Well, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see. Some of you may have seen a message we posted to the Animesh forum. Um, and those of you who didn't, it's pretty much the same things you've been hearing at the meeting anyway. Um, just saying that Animesh is getting close to release. Uh, this is the best time to test and let us know of any... Uh, you know, serious issues you run into. Um, we're trying to uh, knock down a, a couple of issues before it goes out, and then uh, hopefully we'll be releasing for too much longer. Um, let's see. Uh, what else does it say? Yeah, uh, one. One behavioral change uh, that I mentioned in this post, but that I don't think we talked about before here, um, some people had noted that there there isn't really a size limit for rigged objects, um, but we do have a size limit for other types of, of objects like you know regular prims. Um, so uh, you know, unfortunately, that creates a kind of an incentive for anybody who wants to make a really big object to just say, oh well, I'll take Anna mesh. Um, that's uh, so obviously that's concerning for a couple of reasons. One is that it uh, it, it you know bypasses the uh, size limits that are intended for things like griefing prevention, and it also then creates less efficient content because if you turn a, an object that really should be static into fake animesh, then it has to be rendered using the the rigged mesh pass, which takes a lot more static mesh. So we don't want that to, ha to happen. Um, which means we're going to be adding a size limit for uh, for Animesh as well. Uh, don't know exactly how that's going to be enforced, but since we do have real-time bounding box information now, um, probably be leverage that. Um, I I think uh, yeah. Well, I, I agree that Beefer is going to grief. I mean, I can't I can't imagine any any world where there's no possible mechanism for people to do that sort of thing. But uh, I'm I'm hoping that. At least we can avoid creating a situation where uh, you know people who have some concern for doing the right thing are making you know kind of unnecessary animesh objects. Um, so anyway, I don't think this is going to affect most uh, conventional stuff. I mean, even something like Lucy's Dragon, I don't. And so. Uh, but anyway, that that'll be one thing will be coming in a in an upcoming viewer build, and you know once it's there, people can give it a shot and see see how it works for them. There, you were cutting out there. A bit. Oh. You said something about the dragon. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, like I've seen a, a large dragon that uh, that Lucy was using during testing at one point. Um, you know, even that, I don't think would have run up against the 64 meter limit. So, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to break everybody's stuff. But if you're if you're trying to really test the limits of how big you can get with animesh. Um, it's it's possibly a bump up against this. Uh, let's see. So I think that's it for Animesh. Uh, has anybody been doing any new testing? Uh, trying new content out, or people kind of in a holding pattern until release? It's it's definitely the best time to be trying it out now because. Um, you know, it's, it's harder for us to make a change that might break existing content once we're, uh, you know, fully deployed. <laughs> yeah, it's ready as closer than ever, exactly. Okay, uh, Lucy, if you want to let us know about any animation issues you run into, that would be great. Procedurally created dungeon sounds fun. Is that Animesh or something else? It's an experience creation. It's 64 by 64 area. When you go in one side, you come back out the other, and it just reses different rooms all through scripting procedure. Unlimited dungeon. Hey, uh, cool. You can go left, down, cool. left, right. Almost done with it. Can 
you teleport people when they get near the end so it seems effectively infinite? Yeah, that's what it does. It uses experience to... The first person to click on the dungeon is the main user. When they get towards the end, it teleports them to the next room. And anybody who adds themselves on as a party member, it teleports them with them. And wow. it uses dark hallways on the ends. That's really cool. Yeah, that sounds fun. It sounds like a great use for the scripted environment stuff, which is not too far away. Scripted environment. Oh, the, um, uh, yeah. you can, you can, you can Im set environment settings on a particular agent so that they, oh, that would be they great. see a different environment than the, than the, than the defaults. Uh, let's see, we, uh, I see there's some more questions about Animesh. We can, we can talk about that more in a second, but, uh, we should probably take a minute to catch up on other things first. Um, does, uh, do uh, Alexa or Ryder want to say anything about where we are with uh, EAP right now? Very, very soon. Very soon. Here's a couple of teasers for you to look at. One of the biggest challenges we've had in preparing, uh, preparing for testing is that there was an inability on Aditi to be able to sell parcels to users. Um, which Kyle and Ryder were able to fix after this being an issue for many, many years. So that's going to allow us to uh, put parcels up for sale on the testing region so everyone can play around with parcel settings. That is cool. Oh, those uh, teasers are really neat. Uh, right, right. My understanding is that Graham is also doing some graphics work that's going to go into the first EAP project viewer. Yeah, yeah. He's actually doing the shading, most of the shader work, and uh, the most of the shader work you see there. Um, you should have the atmospheric shaders in soon, um, which will which will give us the all sorts of all sorts of cool things. Uh, Graham would probably be the question, the person to question about uh, RTX. Why, yes, yes, that is a cloud texture. I thought I'd seen some traffic recently about trying to fix the purchasing land on a DD problem. Is that the one you were talking about, Alexa, when you said we yeah, fixed that? That's, okay. that's yes. Fixed. You don't, yeah, Lucy, you don't have uh, the viewer to do it with yet. Uh, another project we've been talking about for a while now is Bakes on Mesh. Um, that one is basically in the process of getting all of the pieces it needs rolled out. Uh, as, as we mentioned, there's a bunch of different backend services that have to be updated for Bakes on Mesh to work uh, everywhere, you know, on, on the main grid. So uh, uh, right now we're working on getting the inventory updates out. The, the inventory updates are needed for e on Mesh since those uh, and uh, there's there's also some some under the hood stuff getting it to the Um And then once that's out, uh, we need to get the simulator and the updated baking service deployed as well. At that point, I think the viewer itself is pretty feature complete. I think there's one additional bug with with stacking multiple skirts that uh, uh, Anchor has been working on some, but I don't think it's a super priority. We would. Uh, we're very likely to be willing to ship without it if, if that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't go anywhere. It's pulled on to other things.
Well, is anything you want to talk about this week? Uh, yeah, I see the questions about stuttering with Animesh. Um, that is one that we'd like to take a look at more before we release. Um, don't know how straightforward that's going to be, but uh, it, it is on the list, and we are going to take a look at it. I did have one question for this crew about uh, Bakes on Mesh. Um, this, this is a question about what the behavior should look like when you use a script to uh, change what's in an Animesh link set. Um, let's, the, the typical example I usually think about is you've got a, a dog and you've got a sweater for the dog. So you put the sweater on the dog by adding it to the link set. Um, take the sweater off by removing it from the link set. Now the question is, what's supposed to happen to the dog? Do we want to reset the dog's skeleton at that point, or is it safer to leave it alone? But in the in the sweater case, it's pretty clear that you would want to leave it alone. In the case that you were uh, dealing with some attachment, uh, attachment, but some you know some rigged object that was actually sort of modifying the shape in some way, you know maybe leave it off the right. But if we do reset it, then that could also create a kind of a glitch where you'd have to, say you're using an animation to control your shape, you'd have to like re-invoke the animation after you could deal with what stuff to look. Um, so the question really is what's the what's the most intuitive behavior there? Do people have any thoughts on, on what makes the most sense? Reset skeleton script function. Yeah, that's that's in our possible future work bucket. Um, but it, it is pretty specific. Um, it's I, I think it's it's probably reasonable for us to say that you know the, the default is going to be that we'll leave the we'll leave the skeleton alone. Um, you know you you know when you when you trigger it and unlink. So if if you want to do additional work to clean up. Yeah, the, the reset skeleton thing wouldn't be in the initial release, but I, I do agree that it makes sense, and it's in uh, it's in the sort of Animesh 2 bucket. Chance to look at it at some point. Uh, question about making big plants. Uh, is this just a question about about mesh upload and the, and the limits of how big meshes can be, or is this about Animesh?
Yeah, those are nice. I don't think there's a ton of server load associated with these guys, whether they're broken up or not. I think most of the cost is just uh, you know impact on the rendering side and the viewer, um, which is one of the things that we're kind of trying to account for in the land impact. Um, but uh, as as anybody who's been around here before knows, there's definitely places where our accounting isn't isn't uh, perfect for that kind of stuff. Question about being able to get the animations out of objects. Uh, I mean, normally you shouldn't be able to do that unless the uh, object is modified, I think. Talk about uh, requesting animations by UUID. I mean, the, the reason that we're requesting them by object name in the first place is actually uh, is actually intended to be for protecting content, right? If if you can uh, if you can request it by UUID for an animation that, that you don't own, then you just have to get a hold of the UUID somehow. If um, if if you have to request by name, then the, you have to actually have a copy of the animation in your inventory. So I mean, as far as I can see, that's that's actually more secure, although. Uh, you know, you certainly don't have perfect protection in either case. Whoa, whoa, Lucy, now I'm confused. You you want to be able to get animation names by UUID, but they still have to be in your object inventory. So, well, so why is it better to get them by UUID than to get them by name if they have to be in your inventory anyway? Oh, you just posted. Okay, I'll take a look.
Okay, so in this example, are you making a copy of the animation or are you removing the animation from the object and putting it somewhere else? Yeah, we're really only modifying the object if you changed what uh, animations were in it, I think. Okay, so if the animations are no copy, and the object that they're in is no mod, you can still take the animations out of the object? Yeah, that doesn't seem ideal. Certainly not obvious. Yeah, well, touching the animation, animation touching the permission system is... Uh, Super scary prospect, of course. Uh, what, what kinds of uh, use cases would that break? Yeah, yeah, well, that's the existing content problem. We are very careful about trying not to break stuff that's already out there. Not always successful, and it's not always possible, but we do try. Well, the thing about it is a vendor has their vendor box, which they want no mod because they don't want people taking parts off of it and using it for their own builds. So they make it no mod. They put their stuff into it. You take the stuff out. Yep, makes sense. I, mean, I don't know if that behavior was by design, but I can I can understand why they would like to do that now that it works. Permissions are a really tricky thing especially when you set different permissions on an object that's inside an object and then put that inside another object. It, it gets confusing sometimes.
All right, so I guess the short answer is that the permission system is weird and not likely to change drastically in the near future. The only thing I can see changing about it is being able to apply not just next owner permissions, but second owner permissions. So if you sell somebody something to a next owner, the permissions that they like for a similar, you have something you sell to a sim owner, but they have residents on a sim that use it, it would set permissions for that person. Yes, Lucy, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, that, I think I have seen some jeers about that in the past. Blockchain will fix everything. <laughs> so, yeah, permissions are hard. I... Did I miss anybody's question about something else, or do we have other topics? I just had a, we were talking, you were talking about linking and unlinking the sweater from the dog earlier, and it just brought a thought to my head about experiences being able to request permission to link and unlink, so it doesn't have to be granted. Yeah, yeah, we had a pretty deep discussion on this stuff uh, several months ago, um, and wound up concluding that it would in fact be a useful thing to have but was too big a scope to really fit into the Animesh project. Um, uh, when when uh, Lucy mentioned mod keys earlier, that's the kind of thing she was talking about. Um, so we did wind up pulling that in as its own proposed project. Um, I don't really know where that fits in our current priority list, but it is something that uh, we're, we're aware of and uh, have the... Uh, okay. Would, would like to uh, get to think about it at some point. attach option that allows an attachment to be put on somebody else but uh, still be owned by its original owner? What are, what are the kind of uses you would have for that? One word answer for all proposals. Anything temp attached, the the person getting it attached to them really doesn't have any control over it because it never goes to their inventory. So they have the permissions to detach it, but when they do, it goes back to the original owner's inventory. Well, no, it it disappears. It's like um, LL die. It temp attached. When it detaches, it's gone.
Yeah, for uh, at least for mesh objects, you can't detach and resident in world at all, scripted or not. Um, we, we looked at it a little bit during um, animesh development, and it, it just looked like uh, it, it basically required server code that didn't exist and that uh, was of kind of uncertain scope to get it working. Um, so we decided to punt on it. I think we still have a live Jira for it in the possible future work category. So for your last month, I brought up an idea about having prims that you could, or having a way to click through prims. So the touch event would hit the prim behind it. Basically, prim would be invisible to touches. I submitted a Jira, and it got shot down. They said it would be not feasible. No, uh, looking just a second. Oh, that's a different mode. I have some recollection of that, and I don't remember what the issue was now. Um, I think there was some concern about possible kind of malicious activity with that, um, sort of capturing clicks. Um, Don't remember exactly what uh, what, we're, what the um, what all the concerns were. Uh, uh, does Okay, thanks for the link. Um, yeah, I'm trying to recall. I don't, I'll ask around about that. I, I think there was some kind of concern about abuse potential when we talked about this. Well, it's just for the current project I'm creating, it's you walk down a dark hallway, which I have to use a mesh to make the darkness effect. And if there's a door at the end, you can't click on the door because you can't click through the mesh. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I, I can certainly see that there are legitimate use cases for it. Um, where, you know, where it would be very handy. I was just typing, maybe Oz remembers. Oz remembers everything. What I wish. Uh, uh, no, what I was just going to say was uh, with once we have the scripted environment settings, you won't need to use a, a mesh to make the darkness. You'll just be able to so I can tell the avatar that they're the in darkness. I could use the EEP when they enter the hallway to say that you're in darkness. Right. You can just change their environment. That'll do it. A new setting, a set of settings. 
even if they have their um, environment set to a static environment in their viewer, would it take over that if they're in the experience? Uh, no, the viewer will always be able to override it, but the default will be to accept settings you're given, same as it is now. Okay. Only the difference will be that it'll also be possible to accept them um, from uh, from a script instead of just based on the location you're in. That'll be nice. So, so is it done yet, The the scripted parts will be a little later than the rest. That is, where the first version of of Eep will support region and parcel settings and all those settings become objects so you can pass them around uh you, you can store them in your inventory you can sell them to people whatever it is you want to do um, but um one of the one of the then we'll start working on the lsl support for uh, for setting uh, for setting someone's environment settings based on a script what that'll do is send a message to the viewer saying, you know, you've been asked to set this, these settings. Um, if the viewer chooses to ignore them, there's nothing much we can do about that. Same as is true now, right? The default is to take the settings from the region. Um, it's possible for a, a viewer to ignore those settings and just stay with what they've got. Oz, uh, you said that LSL functionality would be later. Is that after? Um, is that after the release of? Uh, e uh, that that's after the project that's TBD. Viewer? It's certainly after the project viewer. Uh -huh. Depends on how long it takes to do. <laughs> and we're getting close to a project viewer on that. Yeah, yeah. The project viewer is coming, and um, it needs some of the same infrastructure that Bakes on Mesh does. Both of them introduce new inventory types um, so we're waiting until the we have to wait they can't get to Agni until the requisite inventory support has been rolled out and we're trying to get that through the QA process right now that that inventory support is already on at though but right now the EAP team is focused on getting all the little glitches they can out of the out of the viewer. There's a lot of new UI that had to get built built for this. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's very cool. Several several features that didn't make it into the round of environment changes I did several years ago. So I'm really uh, psyched to see them come out. Um, yeah, you can use it to, to go beyond the, the parcel and altitude based settings. Uh, project viewers, normally we set them up so that they um, always upgraded, they always upgrade to the next version of the same project viewer. It should not have upgraded you to anything else. Uh, you can look at the... That is an uh, mesh build, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and the, okay, so the Animesh, right. The re release candidate viewers work the same way. So once you, once you're in a given release candidate, you'll stay in it uh, unless we withdraw support for it altogether, which almost never happens. Um, the other way to get yourself upgraded out of it is to go in and check the box that in your preferences that says you don't want to participate in test viewers, in which case it will say, oh, you're in a test viewer. I'll get you out of it right away, and it'll upgrade you back to the default or downgrade you in that case. But So if you want to use a, a release candidate, don't check that box or uncheck it. I forget which the state is. Uh, I would like it to be true that you can get more than one experience key per account. Yes. Uh, that's on the roadmap. Uh, can't offer you any hints about when that okay. will happen because I have no idea. 
Well, it's just that I'm running an experience in my store, and then I'm building this maze, and they're kind of two different things, but I have to use the same experience for both of them. Right. I understand. I we totally understand the use case. Um, we we have some we have some management infrastructure to build on the back end. Um, some of you may have noticed that we have a back end tools engineer rec open on our website. Um, those two facts are not completely unrelated. Uh, so if you know anybody that's looking for an opportunity to work on the guts of Second Life, yeah. there are jobs open. Is it okay if you live in Belgium? I'm afraid not. Not right now, anyway. Yeah. The, uh, there's a question about the 360 viewer. That's still a project viewer. It hasn't ever gotten to RC, so uh, that should just stay a project viewer. Is there a meeting next week? I don't think so. Normally we have a conflicting company meeting on the first uh, Thursday of the month. Yeah, no meeting next week. We'll, I'll update the wiki if it's not uh, current with that. Yeah, there's really nothing new happening with 360 Snapshot. Um, uh, basically just people getting pulled into other projects. It's, it's, it's not on hold for any functional reason is just on hold because the skills we need are being applied elsewhere. It, it need, among other things, it needs some help from uh, rendering um, and uh, all the rendering help is going into EAP right now. Um, it also needs some additional help from place pages, uh, which it probably should get pretty soon, but all the place pages work has been focused on getting auctions working smoothly. So we're we're working on it and we'll get back to it. 360 snapshots are a very cool feature and we, we want to make them work. Um, it, if it works well for you, that's great. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, um, it's the 360 snapshot viewer makes, uh, works very well on some hardware configurations and extremely poorly on others. And we haven't quite figured out why. Um, and we don't want to release it as a as a release candidate until we have sorted that out, among other things. We're, we're trying to keep it more or less caught up with viewer release, though, with the, that is the current default viewer. So. Uh, Lucy, I'm not quite sure I'm following you. Assign, assign the attachment try count cap to its own data point instead of using the region try count cap. Uh, I mean, right now it, it, there isn't really a there isn't really any variation, right? It's there 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 is a there's there's a try count cap that's defined in the region, but it's a it's a cap on individual animated. Uh, individual animated attachments, right? Um, it's, well, it's not necessarily an attachment. You're talking about Animesh tri count cap, right? I don't, I don't know the, the other uh, tri count caps. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's currently stored per region. If we wanted to increase the count, though, I mean, it's, there's not any fundamental obstacle to doing that. It's just uh, that, uh, you know, right now, that's, that's the limits of going forward with it. Split it between raising and attachments. Um, so, so, so you want to have, oh, so you want to have different caps for attached animations versus not attached animations. I, I see what you mean. 
Uh, no media plans on that, but uh, you know, we'll as always we'll continue to look at how things go performance-wise and uh, uh, you know what what limits uh, what limits make sense. But at least for the initial animesh release, uh, you know, we're not going to be tweaking anything you know right away. Uh, yeah, the new complexity land impact calculation, for, uh, the, the calculations for Animesh have been stable for a while. The, the Arctan project where we're trying to update various other costs uh, is, is, still, uh, is still in progress, and we don't have any uh, you know, immediate changes there. Okay, well, we're all at time. I uh, should probably wrap it up for now. Uh, so, no meeting next week. I think we will be meeting in two, but I'll update the schedule on that. Well, thank you for taking time, Veer. Yeah, well, thanks everybody for coming. And have a good two weeks and Labor Day holiday is applicable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, all. Thanks, Doug and Lindens. Thank you. Right. Back to my procedural scripting. Yay. Catch y'all later.